All right, so here's the equation in part D. Right, we have to solve the square root of the quantity 5 minus x minus 1, okay, so the minus 1 is outside of the square root, equals x. We're going to follow the same steps right, and see where they lead us. The first thing that needs to be done always when solving radical equations is to isolate the radical. So in this case, that means I have to get rid of this minus 1 so that the square root is all by itself. So I put plus 1 plus 1, which gives me the square root of 5 minus x equals the quantity x plus 1. Unfortunately, I can't simplify x plus 1. They're not like terms. I can't add them together or really write, write this any other way, which means I just have to deal with it. Step two says to get rid of your nth root by raising both sides to the nth power. So since I have a square root, I'm going to square both sides to get rid of it. So I square both sides. Right On the left side, it's pretty obvious what happens. The square root and the square undo each other and leave you with exactly what was underneath, 5 minus x. On the right side, you have to be very, very, very careful here. We have a binomial x plus 1 being squared. Okay? In order to square a binomial, you have to write it out in FOIL. Okay? So in order to actually expand this out, you have to write this as x plus 1 times x plus 1 and FOIL it out. You cannot just put the square to both quantities in here. That's not how your exponent rules work. When you have a plus, you're going to have to write it out in FOIL. Okay. So x plus 1 times x plus 1 FOILs out to x squared plus x plus x plus 1. Right, x times x is x squared, x times 1 is x, 1 times x is x, 1 times 1 is 1. So altogether, when we put this back into our equation here, we're going to be left with x squared plus 2x's plus 1. Okay, so this is the new equation we have to solve. So whenever you have a, a plus or a minus and you're squaring, you have to FOIL it out. Now back to our equation. This is a quadratic equation because it has an x squared. To solve quadratic equations, you get one side to zero. Okay. So let me go ahead and write out our third step, which is to solve this resulting equation. So like I said, to solve this quadratic equation, we want to get one side to zero. So that means I had to move over my 5, move over my x. So I end up with 0 equals x squared plus 3x's minus 4. Now this guy, we can either factor or use the quadratic formula. Or I suppose use completing the square if you really wanted. Okay, what, whatever you're most comfortable with. I would highly suggest factoring at this point, okay, because x squared plus 3x minus 4 factors super easily. Okay, so let's, let's try to factor this to finish solving. All right, so we have a 1 out in front of the x squared, and we have a 4 on the end. So when we factor this trinomial, we build our boxes using 1 times 1 here and either 1 times 4 or 2 times 2. Uh, it turn, turns out that 1 and 4 are the factors that work. Here's the box if you need to see it. Okay. So in the end, this factors out to 0 equals 1x minus 1. times x plus 4.
And then the zero product principle tells me if I have a product equal to zero, I can set each factor to zero. So I get either zero equals x minus one or zero equals x plus four. Which gives me my two solutions, two possible solutions, x equals one, right, when I isolate in the first equation, or x equals negative four when I isolate in the second equation. Now the question becomes, do both of these work? Okay, we really do have to check here to see, to make sure that both of these proposed solutions satisfy the original equation. So here's our final step, step four. We have to check our proposed solutions. Okay, after solving our quadratic, we got x equals one or x equals negative four as our proposed solutions. When we plug x equals one back into the original equation, we get five minus one underneath the square root, five minus one, minus one outside the square root is supposed to equal x, so it's supposed to equal one. We simplify what we can, five minus one is four, square root of four is two. Does two minus one equal one? Yes. So that tells us that x equals one is a valid solution to our original equation. So let's box it. Now we have to go on and check x equals negative four. This is a little trickier because you have a double negative situation, right? When you plug negative four into the original equation, you're gonna get five minus negative four. Minus one equals negative four. And simplify what you can. Five minus negative four turns into five plus four, which is nine. Right, minus minus becomes plus. Square root of nine is three. Forever and always, if you take the square root of nine, you're gonna tell me it's three. And then does three minus one equal negative four? Absolutely not, it's just not true. That tells us that x equals negative four is not a valid solution. It doesn't work in the original equation. So we do not circle it, we do not put it in our solution set. The only solution to this equation is x equals one.